Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to pick up where I left off last week with my two part 25 questions, get to know me questionnaire extravaganza. I have realized in the last month that quite a few new people have joined the channel. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Like over 50 of you, it's incredible. So I thought I would do a few questions so you could get to know me and it's also an opportunity for you to go, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I'd like to know a little more about that. You can leave those comments below if there's something you want to hear more about. I'm thrilled last week I already got some feedback that you guys want to hear more about my career in the fashion industry back in New York and in London. So those videos are definitely coming. But today let's finish up finish what we started people let's finish what we started if you missed the first part I will link that below I just want to mention again as I did last week I have not seen these questions I'm kind of looking at my computer to read what they are and scrolling down in between each answer and I wanted to do it that way so you don't get a pre-rehearsed answer everything is off the top of my head let's get started <laughs> Am I Nathan Lane now? Let's get started! So number one in part two of our series is who do you most admire in life? Okay, so I have the obvious, like I love my family. Um, I, I wanna go kinda out of that box, but I'm obsessed with my family, everybody in it. You guys are the greatest on the planet and I love you so much. As far as an individual that I have been blessed to meet in my life, I think I can say, without question, uh, somebody that I admire most of all is a dear friend of mine back in New York named Kim. Well, I won't give away her last name. Y'all be going to her house, paparazzi, hunting her down. Her name's Kim. She's brilliant. She is somebody that I worked with at a fashion company in New York. And it's really funny. <laughs> we worked together at J. Crew. I'll just put that out there. So when I started at J. Crew, I came in big bossy and fabulous from coach thinking I knew everything there was to know about leather and I didn't know a lot and and fabrics and all that kind of stuff and Kim worked with fabric and leather and we went into a meeting and I don't remember what the conversation was but I was like well actually you know when you do leather it's this 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 like acting like I knew something and Kim was like basically shut me down and she's like I've been doing this a while like it was like our horns locked and to be honest, we got off to a rocky start, but we, I can say now, we could go years without seeing each other and the first five minutes, like we are back in it to win it. We are besties for sure. I love her so, so much. But that's not the question. I The reason I admire her is in the fashion industry, a lot of people are just in it for themselves, kind of like getting to the top. It can be a very tricky industry, lots of politics and all of that. I was even part of it in my darker days of working in fashion, which I'll talk about in another video. But Kim was somebody who was always so completely selfless. She always has time for anybody. And what most people don't know is a lot of times when I was with Kim during this time in my career, she had a lot of weight on her shoulders with stuff going on and you never knew it. She was so pleasant and you know, when she wasn't at work, she was taking care of other people in her life and a lot of people at work didn't realize that and she, I don't know, she gave so much of herself, and she still does, I'm sure, I mean, I haven't seen her in years, but we talk, chat every now and then, but she gives everything of herself to make sure those around her are taken care of before worrying about herself. And I just think she's such an incredible person. I, I love her to bits, and yeah. What are your top three favorite books and why? And the reason I laugh, you guys, I just joined a book club over here in Zurich, and I'm horrible. I don't read books. I don't I know that's sad and I'm a terrible person, but I'm a social media person. I'm an internet person. I first of all, I hate fiction. I don't like reading something that didn't actually happen. I have to read nonfiction first of all, which makes me fun to be around in a book club. You guys, our book club over here, hilarious. First book that we picked, I was like, oh, I have a good idea. This movie, Beautiful Boy, is coming out and with Steve Carell, and I really wanna see it. It's about this father. Him and his son both wrote memoirs about his son's meth addiction. <laughs> and it's both, I'm laughing at meth addiction. I'm not laughing at meth addiction. It's very serious and it's horrendous, but that's what makes the story funny. I picked this book that was so grim and so dark and so devastating. I loved it. And we got to the book club thing and everybody was like, that book was dark. <laughs> and, 
And yeah, I just really like reading nonfiction and I don't get into fiction. That's not answering the question. So how many books am I picking? My top three favorite books and why. Okay, I can pick something. I can dig deep. Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> Not written very well, but come on, there were some hot scenes in it. <laughs> night, night is a good, that's a terrible transition from Fifty Shades of Grey to Night, which is a Holocaust book, horrendous. Uh, I, I can't really answer this question. I don't really read books that much. I can tell you my favorite documentaries. What are you most afraid of? Oh, I'm not afraid of anything. That's from Songs for a New World, in case you're a musical person. What am I most afraid of? I'm not afraid of it, but a thing that wears on my mind living as an expat in Europe and Andy and I both living in a country that is not the country where we're from is the worry, it's not fear, but the, the concern that we don't have roots set anywhere. Like our home is wherever we are. Home is wherever I'm with you. I am singing a lot today, y'all. I'm feeling it. Let's go with it. When Patrick looks back as an adult, where is he gonna say home was? We started in the UK, now we're here. How long will we be here? Where will we end up? And then if we get somewhere, we're like, right, this is where we're gonna end up. Are we gonna get bored and wanna move again? Like that kind of just uncertainty. It doesn't scare me, but I feel like we're gonna wake up and be 65 and be like, oh, oh, where's home? And that weighs on my mind a little bit, but it's not really a fear. What feels like love to you? Oh, that kind of video? <laughs> I think, Love, and this is very general, I think love is when you're in a room with somebody or a group of people that you care very much about and you are chatting. I like it when it's upbeat and happy conversation, not sad and downer conversation, but when you're laughing in a room with people that you absolutely love, that's love. I just, I think that's one of the most wonderful feelings in the world, to be laughing with people that I care very much about. That yeah, I like that. And then with a partner, what does love feel like? Love is being there in the really ugly moments, the really dark moments. That's love. I mean, like, you know, the chocolate souffle that you make somebody for Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's nice, but a bit cliche. Love is when the chips are down, how are you there for each other? And that, yeah, that's what love feels like. I don't know if I'm answering the question properly, but that's what love is to me in a relationship. And God, I picked a winner there. Andy is good, y'all. He, he's good. I got really lucky. I love him. Mm. Number five is, what is your strongest personal quality? I can make people feel comfortable and very self-deprecating. Making fun of myself, making a joke, and making people laugh. I think I have the quality that I can make them feel comfortable around me and feel comfortable opening up to me. I hope that I bring that across. I'm very non-judgmental. Like nothing you can say am I gonna go, oh, mm. Cause we all have our thing. We all have weird things. Like who am I to judge? So I do pride myself on being able to make people feel comfortable. I hope I make you feel comfortable here. You comfortable? Get a cup of tea, be comfortable. I think that when I have my friends around, I hope I'm right, that they feel like they're in a safe space, that there's really not much there's nothing really that's off the table that they can't talk to me about. I hope that I exude that to them, that they should be comfortable around me and also I can make people laugh. What is your most embarrassing moment? Oh man. I, I have one from childhood that's really good. Okay, so in the United States they have this thing called physical fitness test that you have to do in PE. So you have like, you have to do push-ups and pull-ups and all this kind of stuff and you have to do like, oh is it the flex arm hang where you have to hold over the pole for as long as you can. When you do all these tests, there's a certain like minimum requirement, but there's also, if you can run the shuttle run in a certain amount of time, you reach presidential level. So it's like, this is the bare minimum to make sure you have some level of physical fitness and then there's like, this is the premium, you're super fit. Well, I was always super, super competitive. And when the physical fitness test came around in third grade, I will never forget it because I remember the teacher who dealt with this, we went to do sit-ups and I wanted presidential. I had to get X amount of sit-ups in a minute or else I wasn't gonna get it, you guys. I started to do my sit-ups and every time I came up, you know where this is going, I farted. Third grade, whole class watching me, laughing. <clears throat> I start crying, but I'm not stopping. I'm getting that presidential award. 
I am not walking out of that room till I have a tick in the presidential box. So I am like farting for my life. God only knows what I ate the night before. Crying, the teacher's like, keep going, keep going, keep going. Finish, get presidential. And then I like leave the room crying and the teacher comes out. I'll never forget this. Her name was Miss Phipps. Where is she now? I don't know. She came out in the hallway and she's like, it's okay. I fart all the time. <laughs> And in hindsight, I think it's hilarious. Like if there was a third grader in front of me, I would say the same thing, bless them. They don't know, they're mortified. They've just farted in front of their friends over and over again. Like that's devastating to your social persona in third grade. God, if it would have been sixth or seventh grade, that would have been worse. But that is definitely my most embarrassing moment in my life, no question. The fact that I still remember it from third grade, that's definitely it. If you were president, what's the first thing you would do? Oh gosh, if I became president tomorrow, the first thing I would do is I would have a press conference and I would say, can we all just hold hands? Let's just all hold hands. Everybody in the country, I'm in the United States in this scenario, and let's just take three deep breaths. Let's all take three deep breaths together. <sighs> We're gonna be okay. I'd just say that, I'd say we gonna be okay. And, and then I'd go to my office and ask for a briefing of what's going on. Where should we start? That's what I'd say. <laughs> what age do you feel right now and why? <laughs> okay, so I feel mentally, I still think I'm much younger than I am. I still think I'm like, cool hip 25 years old like i can hang with the kids when i'm listening to a podcast and somebody's like oh yeah i remember when things really picked up when i when i turned 20 22 years old and they're like oh well how old are you now oh i'm 27 and i'm like oh my god this person's like over 10 years younger than i am and, or people are doing big things and they're in their 20s and i'm like oh my gosh i'm so much older athletes that's another example it's like oh yeah you know it's time for him to retire he's 34 a tennis player or something i'm like what so I always forget that I'm going to be 40. I'm going to be 40 in October. I do not feel 40. <laughs> I do not feel 40. But the flip side is when it comes to finishing our family, which if you follow my channel, you know that we have really struggled to have a second child. I definitely feel 40. It is always on my mind that, oh my God, if I have another kid, I'm not gonna have a kid until I'm in my 40s. I never, ever, ever, predicted that scenario. So in that sense, I feel much older. Physically, I don't know. Overall, I don't really feel my age. I always think I'm a little younger, but I don't give it much thought, to be honest. I think you'd drive yourself crazy if you thought about it too much. I'm 39, I'm fabulous, whatever. The next question is, if you could witness any event, past, present, or future, what would it be? Oh gosh, that's tricky. If I could witness any event, I don't know. You guys might have to put in the comments below, what would your answer to that be? I don't know. I think I'm hopeful that I'm able to to witness my son growing up and getting older. I hope that I'm lucky enough and healthy enough to be able to see him get married and see him have kids. Uh, it's not really one event, but I am really, really hopeful for that, for sure. I guess in the past, if I really, I don't know, off the top of my head, I would have liked to have seen Elvis. <laughs> that would have been pretty awesome. Because even like, watching like young, hot Elvis, I'm like, I get it, he's hot. I mean, to be in like the front three rows to see him perform when nobody was like shaking their hips on TV and he's like, oh my God, sex God. That would have been pretty cool. I would have liked that. The next question is, what is a skill you would like to learn and why? Well, I am in the process right now of learning a skill. I am learning to speak German because we live in Switzerland. I'll give you a little taste. Ich heiße Eileen. Ich bin uh, neun and, oh, neun and Jahre alt und ich... Komme aus den USA. Ich hatte einen Kaffee getrunken und ich habe Brot mit Marmite gegessen. <laughs> I should be able to say much more than that by now in my studies. That is something that I do want to learn. I want to lock in knowing a second language. And another thing I'd like to learn, I'd love to learn how to play the piano. And I'd love to get much better at photography. There's a lot of stuff I'd love to be able to do, but hey, life's a journey. Life's a journey and we's just getting started, so hopefully I'll learn all that stuff soon. The next question is, what does the perfect day look like for you? Okay, I wake up and my husband brings me in a cup of tea while I read some news stories in bed and I just lounge for a while. My son maybe comes in to give me a cuddle and a kiss, but then he leaves. <laughs> He leaves and my husband takes care of him for a while while I just relax in bed 
Then I get up and there is a breakfast of eggs, avocado, some hot sauce, maybe some crusty bread, mmm, yummy. Maybe a Bloody Mary. And then I walk around. I'm in, I'm in a quaint little Parisian or Italian or New York. I'm in a really nice little city or quaint village in Europe. And I just walk around, window shop. Yeah, I'm in New York for the scenario. Andy and Patrick are playing for a bit while I meet my girlfriends for brunch. And then after that, I meet up with Andy and Patrick at a park somewhere and we play, have a wonderful time with my husband and my son. And then after that, somebody that I trust very much comes over and plays with my son while my husband and I go out to a bar and have a drink. And then we go out for a lovely, lovely dinner somewhere and spend tons of time together catching up on us and the two individuals we are and were before we had Patrick, just reconnecting us. We get home and have another glass of wine, go to bed. And yeah, that's the perfect mix of quality time with Patrick in the afternoon, seeing my friends, spending time with Andy. It's all about the time and who I spend it with. It's not about stuff, it's about having time with the people that I love, for sure. That's the perfect day, no question. The next question is, how would your friends describe you? That's easy, batshit crazy. Batshit crazy. <laughs> My friends would describe me as completely wacky, weird, outgoing, I hope kind, anxious. I wor I'm always like, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? Oh my gosh, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about this. And that's lame. My friends are great because they call me out about that stuff. So that's good. But a good time, fun to be around, I think. Politically incorrect, very politically incorrect and yeah goofy the last question is if you could be close friends with any celebrity who would it be i'm not obsessed with celebrity that much but if i could be friends with any celebrities i think i okay let's go guy and girl guy no question dak shepherd i just love him i think he's so great he's such a wonderful person i've talked about him on other videos my five favorite podcasts no question his is my favorite podcast that would be the guy that i would most want to be friends with a girl celebrity that i would most want to be friends with i think a, a female celebrity would be saoirse ronan i think i'm pronouncing her name right saoirse ronan i saw an interview she did on ellen where she was comparing like which guy, I'll link it below, which guy she'd rather date. And it was so funny and she was just so cute and so fun. And looking her up now, I realize she's 24 years old. So here we go again with me in total denial about my age. Seriously, she is 15 years younger than me. If I would have gotten pregnant in high school, she could be my daughter basically. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I guess so if I got pregnant at 15. But I really like her. I think she's cute and super fun and she's funny. I like goofy, funny people. Not too strong a personality, but just silly and goofy and can laugh at themselves. Anybody that can laugh at themselves, I absolutely love. And she definitely falls in that category, so. That's all guys, those are the last of my get to know me questions. Like I said before, if there's anything that you're like, oh, I wanna know more about that. Let's talk more about that. I want more. I wanna know more about Europe. I want to know more about living in Europe. I want to know more about books that you don't read. <laughs> Leave those in the comments below. And you can also find me over on Instagram. I'm at Eileen Vincent. I will see you guys next week. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome weekend. Three awesomes. Wow. Yeah, really go for it this weekend. Like, don't, don't phone it in. Have a kick weekend. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.